They live in our closets, under our beds, and on our screens. They've been making us scream like little kids and yell at our TVs for far longer than we'd like to admit. These are our picks for the top 10 movie monsters of all time. Kicking us off at number 10, let's ease into the terror and knock off some of the more whimsical monsters first. No, they might not have us wetting the bed in fear, but we were out of clean sheets anyways. We're talking about fun monsters like Mike and Sully from Monsters, Inc., the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters, Audrey 2 from The Little Shop of Horrors, and even oddities like the tire from Rubber. However, for our pick, is there a more awesome monster light than the Gremlins? No matter how much he cries, no matter how much he begs, never never feed him after midnight. These formerly adorable sociopaths are equally hilarious and evil, which wasn't always the case. Former drafts had them eating Billy's dog, decapitating his mother, and tossing her head down the stairs at him. It's pretty obvious they ended up as animatronic puppets, but that didn't stop the filmmakers from trying to cast a monkey in the role. They actually stuffed one into a gremlin mask, at which point it apparently flipped the f*** out and stumbled around the room pooping on everything in terror, which honestly sounds like something I would pay a lot of money to see. Of course, on pretty much the exact opposite end of the spectrum, we've got the evil demon sort of monster. The kind of bad motherfucker who's got about as much whimsy as a My Little Pony genocide. This is your darkness from Legend, your Pinhead, and other assorted Cenobites from Hellraiser. It's Chucky, or the Creeper, or Pennywise. More recently, it's Samara slash Sadoko from Ring slash Ringu. The Babadook, and our pick for number nine, whatever it was from It Follows. I'm never going to a place that doesn't have more than one exit. Very slow, but it's not done. Definitely one of the highlight horror films of 2015, and it's partly because it is pretty much the anti jump scare. Sure, there are a few, but this is a monster that isn't really trying to sneak up on you or jump out at you or roar like a harpy in your face. It just walks slowly and never stops. The slow burn tension is palpable, and when you combine that with the brilliant conceit of sexually transmitted haunting and that it can manifest itself in any form, terrifying or benign, it makes for one of the scariest unnamed demons in recent memory. At number eight, we want to carve out a spot for those monsters that fit the term in a more mystical fantasy sense. So that might be Smaug, or the Balrog, Q, the Winged Serpent, the Nothing, or Rancor. There's Medusa from Clash of the Titans, the Trolls from Troll Hunter, and even the Leprechaun, that Irish hip-hopping motherfucker. Pan's Labyrinth's Pale Man basically inhabits our dreams every other Thursday, but for our number eight pick, there's no fantasy monster with more accumulated nightmare hours than the Skeksis from the Dark Crystal. Sure, maybe it's because most of us encountered them as impressionable young whippersnappers, but these aristocratic reptile birds are equal parts disgusting, cruel, and reprehensible, and yet one of the all-time creepiest moments is when the whiny, sniveling Chamberlain is stripped naked and revealed to be emaciated coward. They're bizarre and weirdly complex and utterly unnerving, which is why we have no problem throwing back to them for this spot on our list. Of course, not all monsters are perverted looking oversized naked mole vultures. Some of them almost look human, all too human. And we thought the humanoid monsters worth considering were those like the Phantom of the Opera, the Beast from Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast, and especially the Descent's Cave People. We want to tentatively shout out slasher goons like Mikey Myers, Jay Voorhees, and the Freddy Krugster, even though we here at Cinefix totally couldn't agree on whether they're monsters or not. But for our number seven slot, there's no denying the monsterness or the classicness of the Gill Man from the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I have never seen anything like this before. First and foremost, this is one creepy looking homeboy. Some kind of prehistoric Piscean amphibious humanoid, but that doesn't stop him from joining the limited ranks of Monsters Who Can Love, along with a few other classic movie goons that we'll get to later. This lizard man is the Mac Daddy forefather and originator of Lizard Man, and thus we pay him Lizard Man homage with this spot on our list. Next up at number six, we have the transformed monster. These are the scary bastards that started out as human and have either mutated or simply turned into something less friendly. The classic werewolf is the prototype here, whether it's from Ginger Snaps or the Howling or the Wolfman or our personal favorite, an American werewolf in London. But there's also other shapeshifters like Mr. Hyde, AKA the monster formerly known as Dr. Jekyll or Irina from Cat People or the awesome looking mutants from Tokyo Gore Police. However, if we're talking changelings and mutants, we think the Brundlefly takes the cake. Be afraid. Be very afraid. This ugly son of a bitch hit us with the twofold terror, the obviously frightening threat of the Brundlefly itself and the body horror of watching Jeff Goldblum deteriorate into it. There's something especially f***ed up about body horror. The mutated deformity of the human body hits us on some deep subconscious level where we know that something's just 
off. And because there's pretty much no one better at body horror than Cronenberg, we think that The Fly is a shoe in for this list. Of course, when we humans aren't busy transforming into werewolves or mutating into brundle beasts, we're fouling up the world by creating monsters. I mean, think about it. We conjured up Durgalum, we spliced up Dren, we built some Terminators, which went worse than expected. We even cloned some T-Rexes, and 22 years later, we still haven't learned our lesson. However, if there's a monster creation we think deserves the most attention in our number five slot, it's gotta be the original Frankenstein's monster. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Well, maybe not quite the original. Mary Shelley actually wrote the book on it, but it's safe to say that her novel has been completely eclipsed by the 1931 film adaptation. The flathead, the neck electrodes, the hunchback assistants, the castle, and a lightning storm all came from the movie, not the book. Hell, even though the film is in black and white, the greenish pallor that's so iconically Frankensteinian comes from the makeup used on the original on-screen goon that nobody actually even saw. Massive, imposing, and yet altogether human, he still stands up to modern viewing, which is why he has to make our list. Now nothing says monstrous quite like a giant. Giant human, giant insect, giant whatever. And in movie monster terms, that could be the 50-foot woman, Clover from Cloverfield, the giant ants from Them, the beastly King Kong, the kaiju from Pacific Rim, or Bong Joon-ho's The Host. It could be Mothra, or Ghidorah, or Gigan, or any of the other mutants from the clearly highly irradiated Japanese seas, but it's pretty much impossible to beat the OG Godzilla. The name Godzilla is, in fact, originally a Japanese portmanteau of gorilla and whale, which sounds like a sci-fi channel movie worth a sequel or three. But Godzilla is a far higher pedigree than B-movie mashups, or at least most of the time he is. This beastly monstrosity is both hero and villain, savior and destroyer, an unsightly consequence of nuclear proliferation and mortal nemesis to skyscrapers everywhere. Godzilla is a cultural behemoth and a goddamn icon, and we wouldn't dare leave it off our list. Closing in at number three, who says all monsters need to be make-believe? So don't hold that against some of our favorite zoological monsters, like Cujo, the piranhas, and especially the spiders from Arachnophobia. However, for our top Animal Kingdom pick, we have to crown the Great White Shark from Jaws. And technically, he has a name. Bruce, after Spielberg's lawyer. Bruce is one of the few monsters to make our list despite hardly ever showing up on screen at all, which as you may know, had to do with the animatronic shark looking pretty much exactly like an animatronic shark. But the lesson learned here is that less can be more. Spielberg fed us morsels and we filled in the blanks, conjuring up a force of nature shark that totally isn't the reason we never go in the ocean anymore. It's just, you know, we're allergic to salt water or something. Now, we can't have a monster list without honoring the undead. For mummies, we give an honorable mention to 1932's The Mummy. Of course, there's also vampires, for which we have to honor those from Let the Right One In, Blade, Thirst, Dracula, and most of all, Nosferatu. However, if there's an undead monster worth mentioning, it's got to be a zombie. I know, I know, you're probably suffering from zombie fatigue by now. Don't worry, we are too. But let's go back to a simpler time, a time when zombies were first coming into their own, a time when we had Dawn of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead, and 28 Days Later to look forward to. The time was 1968, and the movie, with our number two slot monsters, was The Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. This movie was the originator. It's the reason zombie movies exist. It's the reason we all secretly kind of have an idea where we'd go when the shit hits the fan. P.S. Dibs on Alcatraz. And while you might prefer running zombies or crawling zombies or climbing zombies to Romero's out for a casual evening stroll zombies, they're all ultimately remixes of the original unstoppable brain-eating beasts. And finally, finishing strong at number one, we're looking at all those spooky boogeymen that have come to get us from a whole other world. And holy shit, are there a lot of good choices out there. First of all, you've got the Predator, then you've got the Blob, the Parasite from Slither, the Invaders from Attack of the Block, the Body Snatchers, the Id Monster, and those goddamn ugly motherfuckers from Pitch Black. Oof. And we really, really love the Xenomorph, but we put it on our top 10 villains list without thinking ahead, and now we'd feel guilty about double dipping. Luckily, we already had another top contender for this spot in mind, so we can tell you, guilt-free, that our number one pick goes to The Thing. I don't know what the hell's in there. 
It's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. Combine the could-be-anyone transmutation of It Follows, the body horror of the Brundlefly, the fortitude of Godzilla with the multiplication of the gremlins, and you've got yourself the thing. We've gone on and on about Rob Bottin's excellent special effects in our top 10 practical effects list, so we won't belabor the point. But regardless of the craftsmanship and tech behind it, this monster is awesome. Hiding in plain sight, incredibly dangerous, nightmarishly creepy, it's everywhere and anyone, and it might very well take over the entire world which is why it's our pick for the number one movie monster of all time. So, what do you think? Do you disagree with some of our picks? Do we leave out one of your favorite monsters? Let us know in the comments below, hit like to show us some love, and be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix movie lists.